perfect boyfriend. I was meant to be going to America for the entire summer to go and work, and I was getting first at uni. I'd just finished my GCSEs when I'd got it. Like a few weeks before I got ill, so I managed to get my degree luckily, even though I don't remember doing it. There's no warning, nothing. It was just, you know, if it's yeah. going to happen, it's going to happen. It doesn't matter. I don't think age, sex, you know, nationality, nothing matters. Encephalitis is a devastating condition. It robs people of their lives. We call it a thief because it just takes so much from families, from the individual themselves. I was 39 years old. I was a successful businessman and I believed I was indestructible. And then suddenly I was struck by encephalitis and I was left with the, the wreckage afterwards. It's medieval. I mean, you, you just think, well, there must be something that can, that can cure this. I was due to go on a combination of a business trip and a holiday. Uh, started getting very fluy symptoms. I was having seizures. Very quickly, I deteriorated into a coma. The causes of encephalitis can be just as simple and as straightforward as getting the flu. Having a cold can cause it um, simply as the cold sore virus. It can be chicken pox, it can be tonsillitis. Really, you know, everyday common viruses that everybody picks up. And then for some reason in some people it goes and attacks the brain. Where she was in and out of consciousness and fitting, and one minute she'd be She'd be, she'd be up, she'd be doing things, but not as our daughter would. She'd be like a, just a crazed girl Personality almost. Personality change, totally. It's, it's so hard to detect, and this is one of the key problems with encephalitis. It's almost untraceable, and so diagnosis is, is so key. Eight out of ten people that don't have treatment with this condition die. With treatment, um, still three in ten people can die. As soon as they turn around and sign the discharge papers at hospital, you're completely left on your own. The, the wreckage of encephalitis is that I was left with an acquired brain injury. That isn't something that can be healed. Once the, the damage is done to your brain, it's permanent. She shouldn't remember us, so it was all like rebuilding everything. You know, she well, shouldn't know us, her mother shouldn't know, well, dad shouldn't she, know. She wasn't a daughter. She, she was an a daughter. She's absolutely. She's something the same. At all. She was a different girl. Because people always say you need to make the most of what you've got, don't they? But it's like, how do you make the most of something when you're missing everything that you used to be? You're not the same person anymore. My desk was in the corner of an open plan office and I would hide behind my computer screen. But because I looked well and I looked healthy, everyone just assumed I was okay. And I had to ask them, what do I do? You're still obviously lucky because like all of us can walk and we can talk and then there's other people they haven't been that lucky. The day before he was struck down he went to London to get his ticket for his gap year with his friend. On the Saturday morning his friend rang up and said that he had difficulty waking up Johnny he took him off to hospital. They sent him quite quickly up to the acute medical ward. But they were almost in the dark as we were. And by the Wednesday, he, he died. We got hold of the one and only Encephalitis Society. They were incredibly understanding and helpful because you know we would have been floundering around. It is the only resource of its kind in the world and they are working incredibly hard to transform people's lives through the help and support that they've given to medical professionals but also to people affected by encephalitis. The Family Weekend basically its a chance for families to come together in a safe environment that have been affected in some way by encephalitis. There's a whole range of people coming together really just to kind of feel that they're not alone, they're not isolated um, and then have fun. If the Encephalitis Society didn't exist, I wouldn't feel as supported in my everyday life and I wouldn't have met these two lovely people. <laughs>
it's like a safety net underneath you. You know you've got someone to fall back onto that's gonna stand there and catch you if you need to shout or scream or vent. I've created a, a garden in Johnny's memory and all his friends wanted to sort of talk about him and remember him and it's a nicer place to be than standing by the, by the grave. And I bought this um, statue of, a, of a, a Merlin, which I thought was, was quite a good sort of symbol of, of Johnny. Just because it's in full flight and sort of full of life. Even though we're based here in the UK, we never turn anybody away that's, that's gone through the experience of encephalitis. <laughs> That's why we're so important and, and you know, one day we'll, we'll have offices all over the world so that we can help everybody.